Hey guys, welcome back. It is Saturday, November 10th. Um, I've been able to get the four-wheeler completely torn down as we're waiting. I've got everything ordered as far as CV axles and new front brakes and that kind of stuff. So we're waiting on that. We actually had our first snow, so uh, the truck is a little bit dirty. Um, we're going to be taking the, the uh, nice wheels off of it here pretty quickly and putting on the stock ones for the winter, which is sad, but uh, I'd, like, I'd like to keep my wheels as nice as they are. So um, yeah, but actually for today, um, my good friend and colleague, uh, JT, is coming over. He's got a 2014 half-ton Chevy, um, totally stock, 100% bone stock, um, and we're going to go ahead and put a two-inch leveling kit on it for him. So um, it ought to be a pretty easy install, but we're going to be able to tell the difference. We'll measure it before and after and show you just how to do it. Okay, here she is. It's a 2014 Silverado half-ton. It's totally bone stock. It's got a bed cover and that kind of stuff, but uh, we're going to start with measuring the height we're at now to tell the difference. Go ahead and measure it. This is JT, by the way. So we're at about just 36 and 36 and some change. There, 36 and a quarter on that side. Okay, so we'll see where we're at afterwards. All right, so here's the kit we're gonna install. It's a two inch leveling block kit for um, half tons. Basically, it's just a big poly block. I think you can also get them in billet aluminum and they're red, but uh, it's pretty basic. It's just a block that goes on each side. The hardware sticker obviously and the box so um, should be pretty easy you start by taking the wheels off it's a 22 millimeter socket just remove the sway bar linkage it's a 15 millimeter on top and a 15 millimeter on bottom and now with that linkage out you can just pull out the uh, spacer in there as well okay, next step is to take off the tie rod end uh, i believe this is a 21 millimeter um, to be able to get that off so basically it's just a stud so you just uh, loosen that off and then you if you have to, sometimes they're a little bit tight. So you can tap on the side of the, of the casting here and try to force it up at the same time and it generally will just pop right out then. The last two studs here are for the shock itself. Um, these are a 15 millimeter socket to get those off. Um, they have a speed nut on the top, um, so you don't have to worry about that side. All right, once you're here, you just need to remove these little bolt clips. You can get them out with a screwdriver. There we go, there's one, there's two. Okay, so after trying just a little bit, um, I figured that's actually going to be a lot easier, not with the bottom removed, but with the top removed. That way the whole assembly can just drop on that lower control arm. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove the, the top ball joint, that's an 18 millimeter. And we'll also uh, pull off the uh, ABS sensor wire here as well, so make sure we don't tear that up. Um, but once that's done, we should be able to drop the entire lower control arm slip that block in pretty easily. There we go. All right. Now with the minute, it's a little bit of a bear to get this in, but having this uh, upper ball joint removed is about the only way to do it. Um, so basically now these are lined up. Use the hardware they give you, a washer and a lock nut on the bottom side as well. Thread those in and tighten them up. So it is all tightened up. Uh, these are a 17 millimeter on top and bottom to tighten these up. So I just sucked them down with a gun and I'm gonna go back here with a ratchet real quick. But that's about it. So once we've got that done, we'll be able to re uh, reassemble this and it should be good to go. Now that the actual lift block is in place, we can go ahead and put the upper ball joint assembly back together. Uh, jack up on the bottom of the uh, rotor assembly and put that stud back in place in the hole. Okay, it was now with the hub assembly remounted, we need to put back in the, uh, the brackets that hold on the brake line. A little 10 millimeter socket there, tighten that up. And while we're there, it's also another 10 on the ABS sensor bracket as well. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, everything's put back together. I'd say it's not too bad of an install. We kind of jumped back and forth a little bit, um, but it wasn't too bad. Basically, just a recap real quick. Um, take off your tie rods, take off your sway bar links, um, loosen the shock tower a little bit, this 318 millimeters right there, and pop the top ball joint out. Um, make sure you um, leave enough room there for your uh, lines, your ABS line and your brake line, and then let that thing drop. Um, and then you can just pop this assembly out here at the bottom pretty quickly, put the new one in, and put it all back together. Um, if you knew what you were doing, it shouldn't take you very long. It took us a little bit longer here for this first one to get it together, but after that it wasn't too bad. So. We're gonna put the wheels back on and measure it, make sure we've got the actual difference that we want. Right, so the moment of truth, remember it was 36 and just shy of a quarter. And that's where we're at, 38 and a quarter. So it was true to, it, uh, to its marketing, it is a two inch kit. In the back, we're also 38 and 38 and a quarter. So we are about right in line, it should be technically perfectly level. 